And now let's jump into a little q and I'll answer all your burning questions, the best of my abilities, and we go from there. Let's go. Comments. <laughs> I only trust the CIA, the NSA, the ATF, and the DEA. Sounds, sounds legit. Those guys never lie. Beardy, I saw your post about your, your friend from, I think it was, uh, was Nigeria. Looks very nice. Bobby shouts, is Robbie the only YouTuber with watch right now? Uh, thanks, Bobby. I appreciate it. I don't think that's true, but I will take it. There's a lot of good people out there. And uh, yeah, you can find links and all that stuff. But also, if you want to get your mind right, there's one link that I put that I recommend. It's called The Daily Stoic. If you're looking for a way just to, and it's free, it's 100% free. It's a website. You sign up for a newsletter and they send it to you. I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. But it's Ryan Holiday's company and it's, and it's really good stuff. And it just kind of puts your mind in the right frame to, to be able to take those hits, to actually just have things just brush off you and just move forward. I think that's the big thing we need right now, especially in this bear market. In the bull market, nobody cares about that stuff because to the moon and Shiba and Dogecoin and whatever. But you don't, but right now I think people would really use that. Links in the description, Daily Stoic. I think it's dailystoic.com. Ah, so the pool man says, what do you think about the advanced trade in Coinbase? So I know that Coinbase Pro is supposed to be going away. I believe it's in December. So there might be this, they're reshuffling things. So I don't know about the advanced trade and how that's going to work. More information will come out. There is another option for Coinbase, which is... Uh, Coinbase One, I think it's called, where you pay $30 per month and it waives all the, tr all the transaction fees up to $10,000, which is pretty good if you dollar cost average like me every day. However, some people have still said that's good, not good enough. And they take a look at the spreads between the cost of like a Bitcoin and Ethereum and they still play a little bit funny and you're paying a little bit more. So it's kind of like when you go to the car dealership, right? You go to the car dealership and you're like, hey, give me, I'd like this vehicle. Sure, how much you want to pay? 30,000. Okay, 30,000. Well, great. And then you want to finance it? No, I don't. Okay, well, we're now it's 32,000. And they just go back and forth and, hey, you want some upgrades here and some upgrades there? Before you know it, they nickel and dime you to death. That's just what it is. So I get tired and I'm just like, I don't care. Just if I go up 10, 20, 50x in another couple of years, because I'm just dollar cost averaging, I'll be okay. The guy with the least worries is the winner at the end of the day. Remember that. Ah, ooh, look at that. I followed that. Do I still on Spotify? Very nice. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Never gets old. Never gets old. How do we ask questions? You just asked a question. Uh, can't find a super chat. I think I turned it off. I just felt like people shouldn't be paying, paying for super chats when they can just ask me right here. Just spend it on, spend it on investments. It's spending on me. I'm doing just fine. I got a really nice green screen on my mom's basement, which looks like a pool house. So that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> Beardy says, leave the dad jokes to, to the professionals. All right. Ah, Rusty says, Coinbase advances live now. Great. You know what? Then I will ask you guys for, for a favor then. If you, so go through Coinbase advance. I need you guys to compare the spread between the, the usual suspects as far as cryptos, and tell me if there's a huge, massive difference between the spread of like, say, a Bitcoin, and Ethereum, uh, whatever. And uh, if you could do, do me a favor, just post that on Twitter and then uh, uh, tweet at me, at News Asset. There's also a link in the description for that. Lat says, hey, Rob, Theta's doing great things. What do you think will happen when there's the MetaChain release in Q4? Look, I had Digital Dave on a couple weeks ago, and he's big on Theta Drop. And he was also big on, now me and Dave have had our bad calls. Let's just be honest, right? I had the horrible crappy VGX call and he had the horrible crappy call on Bitcoin Cash. However, on Theta, he's been 100% correct. On Theta, he did phenomenally well. And then for T Fuel, he did great. And he said his next one he thinks that's gonna do really well is Theta Drop, which is like the governance token for all the NFTs and things like that. So I think that'll do well. Theta. I still hold some theta. I think I, I, I think I, hold, I sold some off, I think about 60%. I still own theta in my theta wallet. So yeah, I think it'd do well. When, when will it, I don't know. I can't tell you when. 
don't make me poorer, Beardy, by sending me EOS. Just kidding. I know I know Beardy loves EOS for some reason. I I bought into EOS. I still have some hanging around somewhere in some wallet. Matt, thank you. 3D green. Yes, it's very tough. It's, it's an advanced thing. You get them in very few places. I happen to have one. Yeah, Dustin's got a good question. FTX or Coinbase Pro? I use, well, I use Coinbase, I don't use Coinbase Pro, and I use FTX. The one thing I don't like about FTX is the ACH. So usually what's really great is that you can take uh, your, your bank account and you can link it up and it can just do automatic clearinghouse deposits and then you can do it. You can do that, but you have to kind of wait a little bit of a time for FTX. I just kind of like it where I can just send it. It's, it's there. If I want to make a decision, it's there. But even with FTX, it doesn't really matter because I just put an X amount per week and I dollar cost average. Uh, I, over there, I buy near protocol and a couple other things. But I'm not buying as much alts as I used to. I'm not putting as much money as I as I used to, like in, 20, in 2018, I put a lot. Now I'm a little more conservative because I just don't know. I still dollar cost average, but I just don't know if the next big downturn is coming. So I'm just waiting for 2023 to really ramp things up. But if I'm right, I mean, I still put money in. In 2025, I still think there's gonna be a bull run. So if I have to you know, ramp up in 2023 as, as the price has to go down, that's okay. I'm okay with that. Bullish on the beard. Thanks. Rob, it's probably coming out. So Rob just got lazy. He didn't want to. Now it looks okay. Ah, oh, Kablam's got a great question. What price do you see sweat reaching in the long run? Answer, no idea. Uh, every time I do price predictions, people, people crush me. But I got to tell you, I think it's going to do quite well. And I know on this channel, remember, on this channel, not financial advice, but I've been talking about Sweatcoin for a long time. There is a link in the description. Uh, let me show you. There's a link in the description. Looks like this. And you can download Sweatcoin. It's free. It's 100% free. Did I tell you it's free? It's free. And you get... Uh, the sweat token, just for walking. Like, I think it's for every thousand steps you you make one sweat token. If you don't want to use that, there's another one called Smiles App where you can you can earn uh, Satoshis just for walking around. I happen to use both because I'm greedy and I also walk, so I do those things. And then there's this other thing down here that says 5% DGen plays right there. That'll link you over to this because I got a second channel called Dan DGen. And as if you don't know, uh, I don't, these, these, um, these projects, like they don't pay me, I pay them and, uh, I pay a good amount to get into these projects, but because I pay into them, I want them to do well. Do you understand I'm biased? You guys know that, right? I'm super biased. I only talk about the things that I invest into. Do you ever hear me talk about Shiba Inu or Dogecoin? Cause I don't invest into those things. So why would I talk about them? I'm just super biased. It's just the truth. So with Sweatcoin, people are like, how much do they pay you, Rob? They didn't pay me anything. Actually, I bought $1.7 million of the tokens in, a, in an early sale. And uh, going from there, I paid 0 .0, a penny and a half or something like that. And that's it. And uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, that's fortunate. Um, I'm in a lockup period because I got on the early sale. So I can't sell those. Like when it drops on September 12th, I can't sell anything until 12 months later, and even 12 months later, it still trickles out over the next 24 months. So like I know some people will say, well, what's the difference between that and VCs? I'm like, well, I have a huge lockup period and I don't get the whole thing at, at once and I super believe in it and I'm probably gonna have it for a while. So in the old days, 2017, they would just give you, apparently, I wasn't, I was around 2017, but I wasn't on YouTube, but apparently they would give you a bunch of tokens. Here's the tokens, talk about my, my company and then you can dump on your audience. And that's the wrong way to do it, right? If you're gonna do it, at least get into it and you have skin in the game. And then when you talk about it, it sounds genuine and serious. That's it. So to answer your question, how, what I think it'll go to? Uh, initially, it'll probably do pretty well. And uh, it really depends on execution and where the revenue comes from. And then just watch the deep dive video, which you can find in the description. And, and I explain all those things. All right. Ooh, this is a good one. Jay Jung Chow. 
Uh, isn't that scary? Because if USA defaults on loan because of government high spending and high interest rates, wouldn't the central stable coins become insolvent and thus our stable coins will lose peg next year? That's true if the U.S. defaults on their loan. Has, has the U.S. defaulted on any loans recently? Not recently. I mean, when was the last time they actually, have they ever? Not for sure. Other countries have. You can take a look at, uh, at Turkey. Ah, who was the big one that just had the big collapse? But when people start to default on the loans, that's when the IMF steps in. I don't think we're going to be there yet. But it's a good point. Hey. Uh, <laughs> never. No, I'm doing right on time. Will Smith of the ACH. Yeah, so the ACH is 12 days, way too long. So with, and he's talking about, Will, I think you're talking about FTX for automated clearing houses to, for that. But you have to remember, I think it's a safer way to do things, right? Because guess what? Not everybody's like me and Will here. Like we try to do the honest thing. You know, we sign up and uh, it debits our, our account for our bank. The money goes in and then, you know, we trade. Now, some people will be very slick and they'll say, yeah, collect, connect my bank account. Bank will, they'll say, yeah, it is. And of course, for ACH clearing, it doesn't happen automatically. It could take three to five business days. And during that time, you might be able to buy crypto and then take it off the exchange and then contact your bank and go, that's fraud. That's a fraud uh, charge. I don't know what that is. Reverse that. And they'll fight with the bank and they'll reverse it. And now who gets screwed over? Well, the exchange gets screwed over and then we all get screwed over because they have to in implement uh, more security. So... I get it. I get it. Rob, have you had any Masterworks art that sold? So right now, they did an appraisal. It's a great question. And the appraisal. Where'd it go? Ha. So Masterworks, fractionalized shares of art. That is all registered with the SEC, so nobody flip out. Uh, I have a Basquiat and a Banksy, which I'll be honest with you, I didn't know what the heck those were, except for I knew what Banksy was. I didn't know what a Basquiat was. I had no idea before I got into it. it didn't, and they're just shares. And then for this one, valued at, I'm up 40% since I bought it in October 13, 2021, which is not bad. I don't think so. And then uh, they've sold these so far. They had one. They had a Banksy. They sold for thirty-two percent annualized returns. Thirty-one for condo. I don't know what that is. Olin, sure. Brown, yeah, whatever. Like I'm not a. Obviously, you can tell I'm not very refined in art, but uh, I don't care because I just care about this performance. Masterworks is outperforming Russell, Nasdaq, S and P five hundred, and crypto, and that's why I'm usually talking about this portfolio balance. You have to balance risk a little bit just by spreading things around. And that's what I try to do. But don't do what I do. I'm not a financial advisor. This is what I, I spread it around, cash, stable coins, degen plays, stocks, masterworks, land, property, my Amazon business, staking, I trust capital. And it's, it's, it's pretty diverse because when one goes up, I want the other. When one goes down, I want the other one to go up. That's, that's my idea. I just don't want to be stuck going, wow, I put everything into Luna because it was doing so well, I didn't sell anything, and now I just lost my, you know, my uh, everything. So I don't want to do that. Just, just trying to be a little risk aversive. As you get older, these, these are things that are important. When you're young, you don't care. Like, yeah, who cares? Ah, Mark, it's a great question. Mark says, Dan, after the Celsius debacle, what's your opinion on Binance lending with Bitcoin as collateral? I don't trust anything anymore. I'm just, uh, I'm just on the cold wallet ideal and just going from there. And you got to remember, like, I remember that I did a lending through Celsius. Remember that? Um, I needed to do, I thought, well, I'll just, I'll just collateralize my Ethereum and I'll lend that out uh, to Celsius. And then that'll help me pay for the house in Puerto Rico. Everything was good. But then, as, of course, as you know, the margin calls would come up, I would you know, meet those and I would put in more Ethereum, more Ethereum. Then when I was in uh, Europe for a bit, I, there was a big uh, dip. This was in April. This was around when Luna collapsed. Remember that? 
I was collapsing at three euros capital. And I missed a couple of margin calls because I was in between I was in between France and Spain and we're moving and I don't know. I missed some and they just liquidated me. All of it. And I was like, well that sucks kinda, but not really, because I didn't what I didn't do, I thought this was silly. Some people will say, Rob, what you gotta do is you gotta uh, collateralize your crypto to buy more crypto. I'm like, well, what if all the crypto goes down? Ah, it won't ever go down, you, you moron. It'll just keep going up forever. Don't you know that? I'm like, well, I've been in since 2017. I don't think it's going to happen. So what I did was I took the money that they gave me for the loan. I put that and paid off the house free and, free and clear. And that was it. So the money that I had wasn't in crypto. It was in a house. The house is now on Airbnb. And it's, it's an asset. And I did, so they liquidated me at when uh, I think Ethereum went down to 2200. That was my liquidation cost. So I'm still up, but just remember that if you get liquidated, it's a taxable event. If you, if you do a loan, if you, if you do a loan like what Mark is talking about against your crypto, that uh, uh, that's not a taxable event. However, you have to, again, it's about risk. So, you know, in this situation, could Binance falter? Like that, the chart that we just took a look at, Binance is a juggernaut. But guess what? So was Celsius and so was Voyager and so was Luna. They were all juggernauts. So just be careful. I, I'm not going to do it personally. And that's my final stance. <laughs> yes, motion capture suit. Hello, Eris. Thank you. Yeah, it's tough to make a joke out of EOS. They did that themselves. Just kidding, Beardy. Just kidding. Just kidding. Chavo says, yeah, I'm feeling better yeah, on some supplements and things like that. You get older, you guys are taking supplements and things. You just have to be it. What, but as time goes on, I'm going to get into the, the TRT. That'll be the good stuff. The injections, not that, not that cream wimpy. Sh Let's see. That's a good question. Orlando says, uh, Rob, do you recommend connecting your Ledger wallet to Daedalus and staking ADA from there or create a new Daedalus wallet, not linked to a hardware wallet for staking? Just remember that uh, anything that you do as far as like a Daedalus wallet or any kind of wallet like that, it is a, uh, a form of a hot wallet because there is an internet connection and you put in your past, like I have my Daedalus wallet right here, actually. I can see it. And uh, the best way to do things is always through cold storage. Just remember that. Cold storage is probably the best way that you can do things and go from there. Now, even saying that, remember Ledger did have a hack. It wasn't a hack. It was a data breach where like the people that bought the Daedalus, the Daedalus, the Ledger wallet, they were, people got their uh, home information, their phone numbers, their, their names and emails, but they never got a hold of your crypto. So I mean, that's going to happen regardless of everything. I mean, I don't know how many of you have ever taken a look at a website called Have I Been Pwned or something like that. It'll, it'll, everybody's email's on there, just how it is. <laughs> Thanks for the financial advice. Good one, Beardy. Rob using bots to ask sweat questions. That would be pretty good. That's not a bad idea, actually. I mean, look. I want sweat to do well, but not at the cost of like someone saying, hey, Rob uses a bunch of bots or something like that. I think it'll do well regardless. I mean, looks to be pretty well. I mean, think of it this way. Like when you guys came on YouTube, did you have to watch an ad? Unless you had YouTube premium. Yeah, you did. Uh, so it's the same thing with, uh, with Sweatcoin over on, over on the app. It's like the number, depending on what date it is, number one through five, it's the most... Uh, the most downloaded uh, health and fitness app in the globe. And uh, that's what they do. They sell ad space. So what's different than that and Twitter and Facebook and everything else? Do you really think Bitcoin Cash is a loser? I don't think the people that invest in Bitcoin Cash are losers. I think Bitcoin Cash isn't doing that great as far as uh, price appreciation. And um, that's it. I like the fact of uh, that Bitcoin Cash should do pretty well for transactions, but I think you know Lightning's got that, and I don't see a point for Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash people will tell me what a moron I am. That's probably not untrue, but that's uh, I just don't see the the point. Uh, oh, I got that one. 
Danny's got a good question. Rob, just to mentally prepare, what kind of a haircut do you think we're going to take on Voyager? Let's say 70%. I'm okay with 70%. I'm thinking like, like this. Like I think between Voyager and Celsius, Voyager is going to come out of Chapter 11 first. Uh, I think they have uh, the offers and the backers, and there wasn't some gross mismanagement. That uh, I mean, there was a special special advisor that was appointed to the Celsius case because of gross mismanagement. And that's not good. So I think Voyager is going to probably be the one to come out. And by the end of this month, again, the end of this month, August 2022, we're going to figure out who is the winning bidder for Voyager. And that'll be interesting. I think if they want that to, to go on, they have to make everybody whole or close to whole, or they have to have a secondary objective, which would be to look, we can't make you whole right now, but we can give you this type of token or security or something like that, which is registered with the SEC. And uh, you can hold on to this and redeem it at a later date as we start to pick up business, which I think would be a pretty good idea for me moving into 2024, 2023, four and five. I can hold on to things for three, four years. I've already done it before. Why can't I do it again? Master Blaster says, thoughts on the Cardano test on issue. We talked about this two days ago. And I said, isn't that, to me, I thought, well, isn't that what the test net's for, to find all the screw-ups? And they did that. So, I mean, look, kudos to them for not putting on the main net and being diligent. Sometimes the grown-ups have to be the adults and say, hey, we got to slow down. And that's what happened. I'm happy for that. <laughs> Beardy saw us. Uh, FTX is instant deposit once I use it a bit for me. Ben, maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I just haven't had enough transaction volume. I need to stick with it. That's a good one. So Joseph says, hey, Rob, do you think Jackson Hole is now priced in or will there be a major swings on Friday? This is uh, Jerome Powell is going to speak, I believe, and uh, they're going to talk about the things they're going to do because there's no meeting here in August, so they're going to Jackson Hole. Good for them. Uh, do I think it's priced in? I... Me personally, everybody says it's priced in. I never really believe it's totally priced in. I think there's always like little dips and things like that. And you just can kind of catch those. I will say this. We, we talked about this at length before. Because remember, with um, before Powell, you know, Fed chairman, I mean, back in the 80s, we talked about Volcker. And before Volcker, there was a gentleman by the name of Burns. And the problem with the United States at that point is that, remember, inflation was was hitting their highs, five, six, seven percent. And uh, people would always say, well, Burns didn't do, didn't do anything. He did. He raised the interest rates. The problem was he raised and raised and he thought it was taken care of because they were using outdated data, just like what they're doing right now. And he stopped raising the rates. And that's when they lost faith in him and go, you should have kept on to it. Now we got to bring in this pit bull named Volcker. And Volcker came in and said, we're going to raise this to the moon. I don't care. 14% interest rates. We got to we got to take care of this these uh, inflation rates because if they go out of control, then we have we, then we go from a recession to a depression, and not on my watch. That's what he did, and it sucked for a couple of years. And uh, Vol they have attributed to the uh, uh, avoidance of of a depression because of Volcker and his his uh, watch dog ways of uh, raising the interest rates. Burns, it's not that he didn't do it, just like Powell. It's that he didn't do it enough and consistently. And I think, I think Powell is an, enough of a student of the game to understand that. I think he'll keep raising rates just to make sure. Remember, it's your legacy, right? Hey, Marky, thank you. Yowzer says, I was busy getting married. Probably more important before 2017. vasel has got a good point. FTX seems very shady to me. They had something to do with Voyager and Celsius. Now they have larger revenue compared to Coinbase. There's a secret. Everybody's shady. Everybody's a little bit shady. A little bit shady. Then there's big shady and, uh, and uh, medium shady. So if FTX has a couple of shady things, in the grand scheme of things, unfortunately, the people that win, that win the wars will write the history. And if FTX comes out of this, which I think they're going to, they're going to write all the history and talk about how great they are and how they did these things, and that's just how it's going to be. I'm just a realist, unfortunately. <laughs> you can buy my art. Yeah, Mark. Oh, yeah, we talked we talk about this. I'm, I'm not going to borrow 
uh, like crypto. I think if you want to do it, a safer option is wait till, I mean, we're pretty low. Uh, if I could say one thing, if you're going to, if you need to totally borrow, like this is what, this is what uh, a lot of the affluent and wealthy do is it's called buy, borrow, die. And they buy, they buy assets. They borrow against those assets because it, it's not a, uh, a taxable event and they die and they leave these, these assets to their children within their wills and their trustees and their estates. So if you want to just take a, a, a hint from the super rich people, that's what they do. Now, if you want to borrow against it, again, not financial advice, but uh, if I'm going to do it again, which I'm not, but if I was going to do it, I would probably do it around here in a bear market, not in a bull market. Because in a bull market, as things go up, you're like, hey, you got to meet your collateral. Oh, yeah, well, you got to keep adding. You got to keep adding. You got to add 2x, 3x, 10x as it keeps going down. So. If you're gonna, if I was gonna do it, I'd probably do it here, but I'm not gonna do it here. Mr. T says the rainbow chart and four-year cycles. That's true. I don't know if you guys ever seen the rainbow charts. Very easy to use. It'll tell you when a fire sale is and when's a good sale, and you can find all those charts at lookintobitcoin.com. No affiliation with those guys, but I link in the description because it's free to use and it's awesome. <laughs> Uh, Bedbug Gaming says, get Mid Journey, make your own Basquiat's. I had Mid Journey. And Mid Journey, if you don't know, it's a pretty cool, it's on Discord, and you pay about eh, $10 a month, and it uses AI. You can put in different uh, phrases, and it will create these different pieces of art. I've used it, works very well. But there's another one that you don't have to pay anything for. And that one is called, what the heck is it called? Let me figure it out. I did a tweet on this at one point. What it's called? Uh, AI. No, that's not it. Ah, AI sites. Auto draw. Yeah, I guess that's it. Name licks. Oh, this isn't it. Name licks. I'll find it later. But yeah, there's another one that's free that you can do all those things. It's pretty cool. Ah, what's this? Do I need to have identification to pull my Bitcoin out of Forex? Am I getting ripped off, please? Here's what I say. If someone contacted you and said, we need your identification so you can take out your Bitcoin. Forex doesn't make, this doesn't sound right pers personally whatever company that you're using for this, um, contact that company directly and say, hey, I got this email and they're wanting me for my identification. Is that true? And how can I take my money off? Yes, thank you, Wrenches. I do appreciate it. Mm. Yeah, you can do lending with collateral on DeFi. That's true. And yeah, you gotta you have to remember if look at the ones that failed us moving forward. Like like which companies failed us? Well, it was the centralized. It was this it was a centralized exchange, the centralized lending platforms, the centralized players. But you know what didn't fail us? Besides these stupid hacks from the bridges, if you take a look at Ave and Compound, those types of things, like did they fail us per se? I think they did a pretty great job during all these these downturns. Not to say that they're perfect, but they did a heck of a lot better than losing everybody everything, except for those damn um, tunnels. Rob, your Everdome video on 5% digital doesn't work. Oh, no. Let's see. Everdome. Oh, yeah, it doesn't. I'll fix that. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Any update on Ledger staking use Alchemy? Nope. It's the luckiest person I've ever met. I escaped Luna, UST, and Celsius right before the crash. Thank God I like it was. It's unbelievable. You should go buy a lottery ticket today. Wow. Gary says, how's the DHA? DHEA? I've been dosing in the morning and by mid-afternoon, I'm rage holler at somebody. It's working better for you than me. I'm just keeping my levels at uh, pretty decent states. 
Uh, Kyle's got a fake background. Green screen. Uh, that's okay. But you made it. PRP. I've done PRP. And uh, I will let everybody know I'm also going to do stem cells in Honduras. So I'll let everybody know about that. And why Honduras? It's the same place that uh, if you do a, a Joe Rogan podcast search, it was Joe Rogan and uh, Mel Gibson. And they talked about uh, their, their stem cell journey to Honduras and uh, how it worked out. Pretty interesting. Yowser says, I downloaded Deadless on my laptop. It's huge, 650 megabyte file size. Yes, that's the, that's the bummer. But you know what? I, that's the only one I trust. I know some people will say, well, you know, you got Nami and you got uh, Yoroi and Ada Light. I don't like Yoroi at all. Ada Light, I'm okay with that. YouTube Premium is a must. Yes. Uh, you pay 30 bucks. Now. I do. See, here's the thing. Like, I'm of, sh I'm of short time on this planet. I don't want to waste it even 10 seconds watching some stupid ad I don't really care about. So what I'll do is I pay for all the premium services. So I don't have to pay for those or I don't have to watch them. I mean, I can make more money. I just can't make more time. <laughs> Whatever happened? What happened to Ehrlich on the next project? I don't know what happened to Steve. I don't know. But it's got to suck, man. Because Steve didn't strike me as that guy that would want to screw over everybody. And this is just my, my thoughts. I, I just don't think he was that guy because he already made a ton of money in uh, uh, E-Trade and Lightspeed. So when he started this third one, I'm like, this will do pretty well. I just think things got away from it. And we did a, uh, a pretty long, about 30-minute video. It was about uh, three hours capital. It was just type in digital asset news, three arrows capital, you'll find it. And uh, I just went over, you know, how those guys pretty much fooled everybody. And uh, I understand now why they didn't do the collateralization because three arrows capital was like, we're not gonna give you collateral. We have all these other, you know, this is all the money that we have. We have plenty to pay you off, but we'll give you a very high yield because we've been doing this for years. Fortunately, it was a Ponzi. And uh, I'm not making excuses, but I get it. But when I see, when I think about Steve, I'm just like, it's got to be crushing, you know. Again, maybe it's me thinking of, of, of how I am, but if it, it's crushing to think that that uh, these things can happen. And uh, but who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Let's see. <laughs> I could also have a four-year cycle. Do you think anybody who's going to, from Celsius is going to jail? White collar crime is. Uh, let me ask you this. How many, uh, how many bankers went to jail in 2008 for the financial collapse? I think one. So don't hold your breath. Ah, what else? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Give myself some, some updots. That's... Marie says, should I invest in crypto now as we were speaking? I can't tell you what to invest into. I can just tell you that uh, my dollar cost average buys, they trigger in another couple hours. So that's just what I'm doing. Ah, uh, Eric Zulu, have you looked at iTrust Capital, staking DOT? Yes, I'm supposed to be part of that, uh, that first rollout. So if you don't know, iTrust Capital, I think it's always above my head. It's a Roth IRA. And you can now stake. So what, let's go about Roth IRAs. Just like Peter Thiel, like Peter Thiel has a five, he made $5 billion by sticking everything in a Roth IRA. How did he do it? Well, he took all his shares from PayPal back in the early 90s, stuck them in a Roth IRA because they weren't worth anything at that point. Of course, they appreciated vastly, and now it's $5 billion. And you know how much he's going to pay in taxes, capital gains taxes, when he takes those out at 59 and a half years old? Zero. Zero percent. That's what a Roth IRA can give you. Now, for... Wouldn't be great because with iTrust, I get to buy like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Cardano and all those different things. And I get to stick them in there. And when I take them out of 59 and a half, which is not far away, I might add, for me, uh, they're tax-free. 
because it's a Roth IRA. And what would be great about that is like the polka dot I have, I'm going to be able to stake the polka dot within the Roth IRA. The rewards that I get are also going to be tax-free. So if you want to find out more about that, link in the description. So I am going through that process right now and I'll be staking them. Uh, I know you're investing in Everdom. Yes, you think it will recover? Sure, why not? But remember, remember this, there's this thing that I'm always talking about, these rules, it's all gone, everything's a scam, don't leave any exchanges, takes, and don't use leverage and take profits. Those take profits part, I take profits. So like with Sweatcoin, for example, like after a year or so of having all my money tied up, I'll probably take some profits. With Everdome, of course, it was another year-long lockup thing. Uh, well, not initially. Initially, I think it was they gave 10%, and then it rolls out over, over 12 and 24 months. I would take in profits uh, as they come out. So I've already taken some profits out, but the rest of it is just stuck there. Do I think it'll, re it'll recover? Yeah, and I think uh, it's a pretty good project. And I talk about why. When I get the right link on there, uh, I'll show you. But if you just do Digital Asset News Everdome, or Dan Degen Everdome, you'll find it. Thank God someone tells me when I screw up. Do you own the Everdome land? No, I didn't get into the land land. I got into the, just the dome token. I missed the other part. Yeah. Bobby Shouts, bookmark Daily Stoic, thanks. I'm telling you guys, it's a great, it's a great resource. And those, those daily emails, fantastic. Wrench today, maybe later. Robert, ah, Panama, not Honduras. Thank you, Robert. Panama. I didn't. I thought it was Honduras when I said it was kind of wrong. Panama. Can you bring your attention to Harmony One? I could. <laughs> Theon and Oni. Better DCA when Bitcoin is at 12K. That's true. If it ever gets there. Some people think it's going to 12K. Some people think it's going to 8K. And some people think it's going all the way down to 5K. And that's it. Uh, I don't know. JF says, a cycle in crypto would seem four years, 2013. I guess this would be for Bitcoin. 1,100, 2017, 19, 6, 2021, 69K, 2025. Who knows? I thought for sure it was going to 150K and look how wrong I was, so. I think that's it. Did I miss anybody? And Bobby says, any concerns that I trust will be beat down. I have a hard time trusting. I have a real hard time trusting too. And uh, if we looked at what happened with, with Voyager and Celsius, so where do they make their money? Well, Voyager, if they just would have kept doing what they were doing, they made they were doing just fine. They got it, they just got it out of themselves. Voyager made it on transaction fees. It was like the hotels.com. So they would use the different exchanges and they were a brokerage and go, okay, Coinbase, FTX, Binance, blah, 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 blah buy bit. Who has the best price for, for Bitcoin? Rob wants to buy a, a Bitcoin. Oh, FTX, you do? Great. So how much is it? 19,600, whatever. Okay, you get it. And the spread, the difference between all these ones, we're going to keep a percentage of that and that'll be our fee. Very simple, very easy to do. Then they got into yield and they were looking into going into loans and thank God they didn't do that. And then with, with Celsius, that, see, they had, that one was, and I had Alex on my show multiple times. He said, here's, here's, how, here's how we generate yield. We're going to take the, the, the cryptos that you put into our, into our platform. We're going to be able to loan them out to, and, we, and of course, we do all our due diligence and all our safety and blah, blah, blah. And uh, people, they collateralize those loans and we give them to them and then they use them and da, da, da. And, okay. Unfortunately, it just got away from them. So all those, those two guys, that was their, the way they make money and they just went off it. Now, how does, so we have to take a look at it with, with iTrust Capital. Well, how do they make their money? It's very simple. There's no loans. There's no, there's no yield generation. Uh, the most risky thing to do is staking now. And that's just one on Polkadot. 
Well, they make it as 1% trading fees. That's it. 1% trading fee. Oh, there's a startup fee, I think. A couple hundred bucks, I think. And um, that's all. So that, I mean, from, and then of course, when people say, well, what about the security? Well, they use the same uh, custodians that uh, Microsoft, Microsoft, MicroStrategy does, which is uh, Coinbase. Coinbase. Seems to work out okay. So that was a long answer to a very short question. And that's it. All right. So guys, look, we're coming up an hour. And uh, that's all I got for today. I got to do, I got to do a couple of meetings right now. And then go do some other stuff. But uh, thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate it. I mean, you hung with me for an hour. That's a long time. Thank you. So if you like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that great stuff. And uh, I will see you on the show tomorrow, roughly the same time. All right. Adios. Bye.